Hi there, I'm digital artist Aaron Rutten, and in this video we'll take a look at my new updated workspace for 2014. The workspace is all of these palettes and brushes that you can see here, and I have them arranged in a particular way that works really well uh, if you're painting along with my tutorial videos. And this is kind of pretty much everything I use. These are all the brushes I use, and I have these custom brushes that I made here. These are all image hose brushes that you can do a lot of things with. There's some painterly ones, some nature brushes to do landscapes, and just some abstract stuff. But we'll take a look at that in a minute. So we have our workspace here, and as I jump over to the website here, you can see it's uh, pretty easy to download. You just go to my website, aaronrutten.com. It's under Downloads, or you can follow the link in this video. And Basically what you want to do is you just want to pick your screen size. So if you're working on a standard monitor or a laptop, you're probably going to want this first option. If you're working on a really big monitor or an HDTV, you'll want this option. And then you'll choose the third option if you're using a Cintiq 24HD. And this is a new uh, preset here which has a whole bunch of little shortcuts uh, so that you don't have to use your keyboard so much when you're using a Cintiq. If you want to just integrate this stuff into your current workspace without replacing your workspace, you can download the brushes only, and you can download the nozzle brush library. That way you could just install it with your current workspace. That's pretty easy to install. After you've downloaded the zip file, you'll want to extract it. So in Windows, you just double click on it, and then when it opens in a new window, you can just click this Extract All Files button. And you'll get a new folder, and in there, there will be a little workspace file. It might look something like this here. And what you can do is you can double click on it if you want, and that'll install it. Or you can open Painter first, and you can go to Window, Workspace, Import Workspace. Now, I recommend before you import the workspace, you should back up your current workspace because you might have things a certain way that you like them, and my workspace will replace that. Now, you can get your workspace back the way you had it, as long as you go to export workspace, save your current workspace as a file, and then that way if you want it back later, you can get it back. Feel free to rearrange this workspace any way you want by dragging these palettes around, and you can kind of really put them wherever you want. Well, let's take a look at some of the really fun stuff now, which is these all these custom brushes. So, as far as the regular brushes go, a lot of these are just standard brushes that come with Painter, and I've made a few changes to the settings uh, so that they'll work better with my tutorial videos. There are a few custom variants that I made, like this mountain knife, for instance, works really well for painting mountains, and there's a leaf knife if you want to paint different leaves and things really easily. Works pretty good for that. And then there are the image hose nozzles and there are quite a few of these so let's just take a look at some of them in the image preview that you get here for each nozzle there's going to be a suggestion of which brush to use and those brushes are located down in the image hose palette and if you hover over a brush you can see what it is so this name here of this brush will also show up here on the uh, actual preview and what that is is that's a suggestion for how you should use this. So this clouds brush works really well on a daytime sky and we want the linear size P brush. So I'm going to select that and we'll go ahead and paint. Now if we vary our pen pressure we get little clouds and if we press down really hard we get big clouds. What you want to do is you kind of want to just build up clouds like this. Now if you want to change the color of any of these brushes, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to choose a secondary color. And you have these two colors here. You have your main color and you have your additional color. Click on your additional color and then pick a color. And then what you'll want to do is you can change some of the settings on here. If you change the grain to zero, it's going to give you a lot of color. And if you just change it a little bit, you're only going to get a little color. But you can see I have orange clouds now. I want there to be a little bit of grain. What I recommend doing is you probably should just leave the grain at 100 for this particular brush because I have these other two brushes on the end here that have the color toggled on already. Click on this one for instance and then you'd have the color. It doesn't work so well for the clouds so you might have to kind of play around with these settings for each 
image shows a brush to get the de desired results that you want. Now uh, let's take a look at uh, boulders. It's a good way to build mountains and rocks and all kinds of things. These brushes work kind of differently. If you paint up, you get a kind of underside stroke, and if you paint down, you get kind of a top view. So you can get some kind of arch effects here. Let's take a look at fire. Now, this is a, another little label that's on here. You might have to use a certain composite method when you're painting. So, for instance, this suggests that we use screen and we want to have a dark background or just a background that's not completely light. So we'll set the composite method to screen and we can paint. And this does work a little bit better if you're on a dark background, as I mentioned. So let's just fill the background with black. Now we can see that fire a little bit better that we were attempting to make. You can always modify these too, like if this fire doesn't look right to you, you can go ahead and blend it a little bit, because I think that would kind of help the fire look a little bit more like it's moving. So these are kind of meant to be modified, but a lot of them can be used as is. Let's take a look at the branches. And the branches take kind of a magic touch. You want the linear size P angle D, that's this brush. It might take a couple of tries to get it working, but you want to start out with firm pressure and then lighten your pressure as you come to the end of the stroke when you get these nice branch shapes. Spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to make this one, just looking at trees and trying to get inspiration. And so there's a branch. Let's take a look at the grass. The grass is really nice. There's several kinds of grass, dry grass, and you can play around with these and see which one you like best. Uh, this is when we want the linear size P brush, so I'll select that. That way the grass is upright and you can see you get instant grass. Um, what works best with these grass brushes is if you give them some sense of perspective. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to make sure that your grass in the background is smaller and then when you get into the foreground you make your brush bigger and bigger and bigger and that way you start to get this nice perspective effect and then the grass will look real because if the grass is all the same size it's just not going to look right. Same goes for most of these uh, brushes here. Let's take a look at some of the other kinds. So we have some painterly brushes and what these are are brushes that are attempting to look kind of more like real natural paint. So I have the break thick, which suggests that we use the paint break brush. So I'm going to select that. And we'll pick a secondary color here. Let's try this orange. And we'll go ahead and start painting. And you can see we get this nice paint break, kind of like something you'd get if you were using a palette knife with oil paint. And again, you want to play with these grain settings. You'll get more texture if you add more grain. You kind of see that there. Nice thick paint texture but you'll start to subtract color. And as you get to the higher end of the grain, you're gonna to start to get more of this gray color, which is the neutral color of the paint before adding any color to it. So grain setting's better off kind of down here towards the lower end, like so. Now, what got me started on these painterly brushes is I wanted to make a nice fan brush dab for making pine trees. So I'll show you that one. We want to use the linear size P angle D color for that particular one, so I'm going to select that. Let's choose a darker color here. And you can see if I vary my pen pressure a little bit and I change my brush size, I get this really nice pine tree effect. It's kind of like something you get with an uh, oil painting technique. And you can go ahead and turn on transparency, preserve transparency, and put on highlights and all kinds of stuff, and there you go, instant pine tree. Let's take a look at some of the abstract brushes. These are just kind of stuff to make kind of abstract artsy stuff, just kind of little decorative things. You want to try out all the different kinds of brushes here because you'll get some different effects. For instance, if we try this linear size P, we get kind of an upright thing that works with pen pressure. However, if we use uh, linear size P angle D it kind of follows the direction of our brush stroke. And we get something more like that. If we use this spray size P brush, it just kind of sprays them out randomly, like 
So you can really have a lot of fun with this. And you could go through with a blender and you could blend all this stuff and modify it and really make it your own. It's really fun brushes. So I'm not going to go through all of these uh, just because it would take forever. I'll just quickly pull up kind of a preview and then you can see a visual of what's in here. I've got boulders, branches, clouds, fire, grass, all kinds of stuff, leaves. Lots of rocks. These are really good for when you're doing beaches and ground and gravel. Uh, we have the painterly brushes. A few different kinds of different painterly brushes. Uh, we have the abstract, which are just these kind of playful kind of things that you can use to make some wacky looking artwork. And then there is miscellaneous, which is your cigarette butts and your Cheetos and your hair and garbage and just some little kind of experimental things that I was trying out. So that is the workspace. And again, you can go to my website, aaronretton.com. It's free to download. And if you want to, you can donate $25 or any amount, and that will go towards my work creating uh, more references for Corel Painter and tutorial videos. So if you found this information helpful, take a quick second to like this video and share it on YouTube. And that'll make it easier for other digital artists out there to find this information. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for my next video.